And we're going to teach on a subject that is very positive in the church of the Lord, and that is judgment. I'm so excited somebody said that I even can't hide it. Amen? Judgment. The judgments of the Lord. Now, the scoffers will say, well, you know, back in uh, the early 1900s, the the Spanish flu, you know, uh, took over and thousands and thousands of people died. And many said, well, we're in the last days. And then after the Spanish flu, we had World War I. And everybody said, well, we're in the last days. And then, you know, uh, World War II and so on, right? And what the scoffers say is that things are the same. You know, every, there's, there's pandemics, there's disasters, there's wars. Everything is the same. But you see, the scoffers are liars, amen? Because the difference between now, what's happening with the pandemic now, and what happened in the early 1900s, is that Israel became a nation in 1948. That was a prophecy given to the Israelites long, long ago. And when Israel became a nation in 1948, now we know we're surely in the last days. Amen? And that's how we know. Amen? Uh, we must understand that. Amen. And I hope today's teaching will help you. Remember that I am a coach. Say, he's a coach. He's a coach. And I'm trying to train you into something. Yes. If you see me as a coach instead of a pastor. Wow. See me as a coach. And you're in training school for me to train you. Amen. 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 Whether you do your job or not, the coach is supposed to teach and help you. And if you don't do your job, then you pay for being unfaithful. Yes. Amen. But I'm going to teach you some things this morning. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. The judgments of the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, give me A under point number one. May the Lord add his blessing to his word. Amen. Matthew 16. Jesus said, talking to the Pharisees, religious people of his day. He said, in the morning, stormy weather today. He says, that's what you know. For the sky is red and gloomy. You know how to discern the appearance of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. Hmm. See, we can discern, and I mean, we can get on the internet and find out if Friday is going to be hot or cold. Yes, hallelujah. Somebody help me. You can know what's going to happen on Saturday Night TV by just going on the TV guide and looking to see what's coming. See, we understand that. You understand that if you work 40 hours or 80 hours, you're going to get paid. You understand all that. You understand the signs. Amen. But Jesus said to the religious people, you know how to discern all this stuff, but you're not discerning the signs of the time. And that's what, that was 2,000 years ago. Be please. COVID-19 in the USA, 6 million confirmed cases. Deaths, 202,000. See, please. Texas, over 700,000 confirmed cases of COVID, 14, oh, almost 15,000 dead. D, please. Hidalgo, say, uh oh, that's where I live. Oh. Yeah, that's where we live. 30,000 confirmed and almost 1,500 dead. So, are you discerning the signs of the times? Or are you like the Pharisees and the Sadducees of Jesus' day? Has your behavior changed for the better? Have you begun to adjust your attitude, adjust your belief system, because you're discerning the signs of the time, or you continue to be as you were before the pandemic? Now, I know there's big controversy. Well, you know, uh, it's only, you know, the numbers are all, you know, uh, they mess with the numbers and this and that and all that. Well, I don't know if that's true or not. But this I know, that many people have lost their loved ones because of COVID. Whether they were, uh, whether they had diabetes or some other illness, COVID came in and took them. Right. Now, you talk to those people who lost loved ones through COVID and tell them, oh, that's a conspiracy, isn't it? See what they tell you. Well, the government is cooking up the numbers because they want to control us better. See what they tell you. Amen? Are you discerning the, the times, the signs of the times? Are you discerning that? Are you waking up? Are you remaining asleep as maybe you were before? See, the Bible says that when the flood came, 
It took all of them away, Jesus said. Only Noah and, and wife and sons and, and wife's sons were saved. Noah preached for over a hundred years. Right. What were people doing? Well, let's see what we're going to do Friday. And then Saturday we're going to barbecue. And then next Sunday we're going on vacation. And then we're going to do this. And then we're going to do that. And they would hear Noah preaching. A flood is coming. A flood is coming. Ah, you know, don't worry about that kook. Jesus said the flood came and took them all away. See, they did not discern the signs of the time. Help me now. Give me E, please. Look what's happening in the United States of America. Not China, not Russia, not North Korea. In the United States of America. A country that proclaims that we are free. A church in California has been fined up to $52,000 because they said, no, we're having service. We're going to comply with social distances. We're going to comply with wearing a mask and all that, but we're having services. That isn't the Constitution. Well, you know what the government said there in California? No, you're not. And this is only one church. A big church in, in California would rent a parking lot from the city. Big parking lot. They had been renting it for 25 years. Well, when this happened, the mayor said, we ain't renting you that parking lot no more. Are you discerning the signs of the times or you're still asleep? TV is still sleeping you. Events are still sleeping you. Going here and going there, are you still sleepy and, a, and asleep? Or are you beginning to wake up and are you beginning to say, man, this stuff is serious. I better get right. Amen. 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 F, please. This is at the beginning of, of COVID. A pastor in Florida said, no. Nope. We have a constitutional right to, to worship the Lord and, you, and the government can make no law concerning that. They said, we don't care. They went and arrested the pastor, put him in jail, took his picture, mugshot of the criminal. Are you discerning the signs of the time? Or are you still asleep? You're still all caught up in how you look and how you feel and what you have and what you have not. Are you still all caught up in this and that and this and that while the signs of the time are, are trying to tell you something? Wake up! Wake up! The flood is coming! Wake up! The judgments of the Lord. Amen? Point number one, we must cry for help from the Holy Spirit in discerning the signs of the times. We must cry out for help. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me. Help me to understand. Help me to take authority over my flesh. Help me to seek your face. Help me to know and understand the signs of the time. Yes, Don't believe the scoffers that say, ah, everything's the same. These preachers, these paranoid, schizophrenic preachers are always saying that stuff. Well, keep on believing them. And see where you end up. Those scoffers know. Amen? Amen? Look at this. Amen? Point number two. Believers must believe that the Lord is full of love. Say amen. amen. Compassion. Say amen. amen. Grace and patience and truth. And believe that His judgments are true and righteous. Revelation 16, 8, please. And I heard another from, from, the, uh, from the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. B. Amen. Revelation 19. After this, I heard is a great voice from a great crowd in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belong to our God. Because His judgments are true and righteous. Amen. And many scoffers say, well, those are angels in heaven. Well, let's read somebody that said something like that that wasn't an angel in heaven. Give me C, please. Psalms 19. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. And righteous. Amen. 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 Point number two. Believers must believe that the Lord is full of love, compassion, grace, patience, truth. And believe that His judgments are true and righteous. Point number three. Believers must believe that the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous even when it comes to our nation. See, we don't have no problem bombing the Iraqis. 
We don't have any problem bombing the Iranians. We don't have any problem when, when a coup comes in and the military takes over a country. We go, well, whatever. What's coming out at 7 p.m. tonight? Honey, we need to buy two TVs because I don't want to watch what you're watching. <laughs> and then we need to buy more TVs because the kids don't want to watch what we watch. See, that's what we think. But uh, let me tell you something. Are we also part of what's going on around the world? Yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. We are in this pandemic. Amen. Amen. Why? I'm going to get to that in a little bit, in a little while. But you see, it's easy to say, yeah, judge Mexico, all them cartels. You know, somebody was uh, accusing Mexico of being this government that, you know, they don't care and all this. And I said, well, wait a minute. Uh, who are the Mexican cartels selling drugs to? Mexicans? Iranians? They're selling it to the USA population. So what if there's no population in the USA that wants drugs? What? Where would the cartels be? Out of business. Out of business. But you see, the, the spirit of the world comes against us and confuses us. Oh, them cartels, no. If there's no business, there's no cartels. The problem is here in America. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, please. These are statistics. Say, I don't like those. Say, I don't like those. They tell the truth. Abortions in 2017 here in the United States. In 2017, 862,000 babies were murdered. You see, these scoffers say, well, they're, they're really not alive. But try to kill a little puppy in the mama's womb and see if they don't videotape you and send you to jail for being cruel to animals. Amen. Do that. Go outside and then give a good kick to your dog because he's not pooping where he wants to poop. And somebody videotapes, you'll see what happens to you. You'll be thrown in jail and fine, but you see, you can't kill a baby. Not a problem because they're not alive. Per year, that's per year, per day. 2,362 babies per, per day are aborted. But what's coming out next Friday? Are we going to the beach next weekend? Are we going to barbecue for that party for my aunt and my uncle? Are we going out of town? That's per day. That's 98 babies per hour have been aborted and killed. Are going to be, maybe more. This was 2017. One baby is killed and aborted every 20, every 96 seconds. Be please. But you see, there's good news. Say, oh Lord. 68% of the citizens of the United States believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Like the Mexicans say in Spanish, aquí hay gato encerrado. Amen. How can 68% of Americans believe in, that Jesus is the Son of God and 900,000 babies are aborted, aborted per year? Well, wait a minute. What's going on here? Well, let me give you another statistic. This is even better. We must believe that the, that the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous when it comes to our own nation. See, please? 77% of the population or 77% of Americans believe that there's evidence, evidence, evidence that aliens have visited our earth. 77% believe that aliens have already visited our earth. 68% will believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Somebody help me. Point number three. Believers must believe that the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous even when it comes to our own nation. It's easy to say, get them, God. It's easy to say, bomb the heck out of them, God. It's easy to say, them backwards people.
For many years I've told this church, one day you're going to open the back door of your house and you're going to go, what the heck is going on? Concerning the craziness and the judgments of the world. Well, was I wrong? No. I've been telling you this for years. I've been telling you this for years. It's coming. It's coming. Prepare. 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 It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Amen. Point number four. Believers must believe that the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous even when it comes to our churches. Oh, getting closer. Say, come on, do part two next week, Bishop. A, under point number four, these are the churches of the New Testament. Jesus said, write to the angel of the church of Sardis, he who has the seven spirits of God and seven stars in his head. I know your works, that you have a name that is alive, but you are dead. In other words, that's the church you went to because it had everything. Good program for the kids, good thing for the youth, a coffee shop. Oh, man. It's a lie. Amen. Amen. Got an email from a lady that said, uh, do you have a, a children's church? I go, yeah, yeah, we do. She said, well, do, do they play video games? Because that's what my kid wants to do. <laughs> I was a nice pastor and I said, no, we don't. But I should have said, really? That's all they do all week. And you want them to come to church to play video games? Somebody's not being a good parent. Yeah, that's Amen. Right. Wow. Amen. B, please. Another church. Write to the angel of La Sodicea. Because you say I am rich, I have enriched myself and I need nothing. And don't you know that you are miserable, worthy of pity, poor, blind, and naked? Wow. Amen. Point number four. Believer must believe that the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous even when it comes to our churches being judged. And that includes this one. Yes. We are a church, aren't we? Yes. Amen. Amen. Big time, big time president over a big college. You probably heard of this. Big time president of a college, famous college. You know, his dad built the college and then the son took over. Yeah. Caught in a scandal. Yeah. Wife having an affair with the pool board. Make sure you don't have a pool now. <laughs> Make sure you don't have a pool now, and if you do, hire Pancho. <laughs> Amen. Hire somebody that you know that's got a pot belly so big that he can play with his belly button when he's saying, "We want me to clean the pool." <laughs> hire him, or else you'd be in trouble. You know, and this young man who brought this out is going to be judged by the father because he knew exactly what he was doing. He recorded conversations. That doesn't justify the wife doing what she did, and it doesn't justify the husband doing what he did. But judgment is falling upon the church. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Point number six. Point number five. Believers must believe that the judgments. There we go. Point number five. Give me number six, please. Believers must believe that the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous, even when it comes to our personal family. Don't you tell me that. Oh, man. You can judge the neighbor's kids. You can even judge my sister and my brother's children. But don't you dare talk about mine. Come on now. Don't look at me like you have a mask on. Don't look at me like somebody said you have to wear a mask. Discerning the signs of the time. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles that Saul was picked by the Lord because the people wanted a king. And God said to them, I'm going to give you this king and he's going to take and take and take from you. He's going to be evil. They said, we don't care. Give us a king. Well, God gives them Saul. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles chapter 10 that there was a war against the Philistines and then they were losing. And guess what Saul did? Saul falls on his sword and killed himself. His armor bearer falls on the sword and killed himself. And the Bible says that Saul and his three sons, namely his household, died together that day. See, you can't believe in the judgments of God to fall on Iraq. 
You can't believe the judgments of God to fall on those that you don't think should be alive. You, you cannot believe and you cannot think this way. Fall upon those that attack me. Fall upon those that don't like me. Why would not anybody like me? I'm sweet as honey. Well, it depends who you're talking to. If you're talking to the reflection in your mirror, you probably are. But if we talk to your husband, your wife, your kids, your aunt, your uncles, let me say, well, <laughs> you know, sometimes I just want to put a little bit of a sugar on that person and make some lemonade, but they're okay. Point number six, believers must believe that the judgments of the Lord true righteous, even when it comes down to our personal family. When we were preaching on radio, you know, we used to get calls after the service, and this lady called me one time. Well, many, not only one. This mama, my heart went out to her. But she said to a pastor, can you please pray for my son? I said, what's the problem? Well, he's in prison and he, you know, we're, we're asking that the judge will have mercy on him. And, you know, oh, my God, you know, it was that wife that he got married to. All right, mamas, don't throw me your mask now. I got one. It's that wife he married that caused him to do all that. <laughs> and I said, well, ma'am, let me ask you this. You want us to pray so that the judge will, you know, uh, reduce the sentence? Yes. I said, all right, is your, is your son saved? No. Your son is not saved and filled with the Holy Spirit? No. Well, shouldn't we pray that? Oh, hallelujah. I think I'm not hearing too many amens because of the mask. Amen. The mask is preventing you from saying amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, how do you feel? Hey, when judgment comes against me, this church, my family, hey, I accept it. I trust in the judgments of the Lord. God said to me, a group of people are wanting to take the church in a different direction. They're going to rise up and they're going to split the church. And I said, I cried out for months. My wife and I cried out for months. Is there any other way? Is there any other way? And prayed and prayed and prayed. I finally said to my wife, we need to accept what God is saying. We need to believe. God, these are the judgments of God. Amen. He said, I must remove these group of people because they want the church to go in a different direction than I want to take it. Right. See, that was judgment. So don't get too close to home, Bishop. Amen. Point number seven, believers must believe that the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous even when it comes to our own personal life. Ay, oh, Dios mío. Amen. Say, oh, Lord Jesus, help me. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, help me. Amen. You see, how many times do we get into an accident? Don't get into an accident. Say, I'm not going to get into an accident. Amen. How many times does a person get into an accident? Right? And they say, oh, it was an accident. Really? An accident. Yeah. Perfect timing. At the same place, at the same time, boom. Perfect timing. And you get into an accident. That doesn't sound to me like an accident. It sounds to me like there was perfect timing going on. Boom. What if you waited a few minutes before? You would have missed the accident. What if you went a few minutes ahead? You would have missed the accident. That's right. We were in Houston and this maniac, uh, you know, there's a bunch of bridges in Houston, walkways, right? Because you can't, you know, cross over 10 lanes of traffic going 80 miles an hour. So there's these walkways, you know, these bridges. Well, this maniac, you know, was walking and then he saw a, a boulder, big old concrete boulder. You know, he picked it up and he said, I know, I know what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna throw it. And he throws it and it lands on this lady's car, right on her face, right where her face was, it hit her and killed her instantly. What if she had been a few minutes late? What if she had said, you know what, I need to just hold on here, maybe I need to pray. Amen. Help me. Amen. Even when it comes to our own personal lives. Something happened to me about almost less than a year ago. I'm telling you, it scared the Holy Ghost out of me. <laughs> Come on, Bishop, say it was the devil. No, it scared the Holy Ghost out of me. Man, I tell you, and I, I, I was like, God, what is going on, man? He said, you opened the door to the devil, son. 
I said, no, I did. He said, yes, you did. What did you think yesterday? And the Lord gave me the day and the time. And I went back and I went, oh, my God. I, I, yes, I did receive that thought. He said, well, then you're being judged. Because you received it. I'm going to tell you what happens. That way when it happens to you, you don't blame the soap. I was taking a shower. I didn't have my eyes closed. And somebody pushed me. Did you hear me? Oh, your wife was pretty mad at you. No, it wasn't my wife. Somebody pushed me. A spirit pushed me. And I went down. And let me tell you how I know that this God had mercy on me. Because I stopped the fall by grabbing the shower curtain. I weighed 190 pounds. You know how easily those shower curtains... <laughs> well, I grabbed the shower curtain and that withheld me and I just landed like in slow motion. But you see, I opened the door to that demonic spirit. I could have said to my wife, oh, that was an accident. No. Oh man, somebody help me. Amen. A under point number seven. Peter said, it is time for judgment to begin with the homosexuals. Come on, help me. Ah, that's what it says. It is time for judgment to begin with the lesbians. With those who party and drink and go to clubs. Hmm. For the sinners. No, it's getting... Come on now, this is the first service we've had since Mother's Day. Show some enthusiasm. Amen? It is time for judgment to begin to start with us. Peter says, what will happen to those who refuse to believe God? Even worse. Point number seven, believers must believe that the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous even when it comes to our own personal life. Now, things have happened to me. Things have happened to me and God has told me I allowed that to happen because I want to teach you something. That's a judgment. Mm, say, oh Lord Jesus. I think Bishop needs to take a sip of coffee there. Because my brain is really freaking out. Point number eight. Believers must believe that the judgments of God are true and righteous. And must judge themselves under the light of the Holy Spirit to make appropriate changes to their behavior. See, we judge ourselves all the time. Well, I don't know, Bishop. It's been a while. No, you did it this morning. Didn't you look in front of the mirror and say, Woo! Woo! I said to my wife, Honey, how come... How come women take selfies and it's only on their face. <laughs> she said, because the husbands are jealous. I'm like, hmm. I got to think about that one. <laughs> Amen? See, you judge yourself all the time. You get on the scale and you go, my God, I need to lose some weight. If you overeat, you judge yourself and you go, oh, man, I think I ate too many burritos. You wake up in the morning feeling like a truck ran over you. You judge yourself and you go, My God, man, I must not have got any sleep last night. I feel like a dog. I could feel like I've been run over by a truck. You judge yourselves all the time. You go into your bank account and you go, My God, 30 bucks left. Well, oh, praise the Lord. Judge yourself all the time. You're driving in the car and you're judging yourself. Okay, speed limit is 60. All right, I need to go 60. So if we do that all the time, and we do. Amen? Amen? Put on your clothes and you go, oh my God, it's fitting a little bit tight. You're judging yourself. Then if we do that all the time, then we must uh, discern and ask the Holy Spirit, can you help me judge me so that I can understand where I need to change? Why do we have to do that? A, please, under point number eight. This is what Paul said. If we judge ourselves, what will happen? 
If we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Mm. Now, here's the saving grace. But when we are judged, but when we are judged, we're disciplined by the Lord so that we would not be condemned with the world. Ask the Holy Spirit every day. Holy Spirit, can you shed the light on me? You are the Spirit of truth. You are the Holy Ghost. Can you show me where I need to make some changes? Or do you get up in the morning having visions of your enemies and how you wish they would get into an accident? Or do you wake up each morning thinking about other people's behavior? I and my husband would only change that bum. Oh, and my wife would only change that bummer. Oh, if I just had more money. Oh, if I had this. Do you wake up thinking that way? You wake up having visions as we think in pictures. Amen. We think in pictures. Do you wake up thinking about those things that are not working and how you wish you had more money, this and that and this and that? Oh, I got bishop. We do it all the time. Well, I got some revelation for you. As you're doing all that, also tell the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, shut, shed the light on me so that I may know what kind of behavior I must change so that when judgment comes, I won't be judged. Amen. I'll be part of what's going on, but I won't be judged. Point number eight, believers must believe that the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous. Say, oh Lord Jesus, help me. And judge themselves under the light of the Holy Spirit to make appropriate changes to their behavior. Amen? Amen? To make appropriate changes to their behavior. When that happened to me, I tell you, man, I began to pray when I was, you know, pushed there in the shower. I began to pray. I thought, my God, I, man, I need to. I need to be careful. And then several months later, a thought came into me and I said, stop in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Who are you talking to? Your wife? No. I'm talking to the devil. Amen. Because in here is where the devil exists. Amen. Here in the natural mind, the Bible says the carnal mind is enmity against God. Here is where the devil dwells in between our ears. Amen. And I said, I'm not thinking that. Amen. I'm not going to think that. You know? Sometimes we drive in, a while in my wife's car because I don't want to drive. And, and we're driving and I go... Shut up! And my wife goes, who are you talking to? And I said, well, honey, were you talking? No. Well, I'm talking to the devil. <laughs> judge yourselves, folks. You say, well, I, I don't know. No, judge yourself. The Holy Spirit is not a tattleteller. The Holy Spirit is not a gossiper. The Holy Spirit is not going to stab you on the back when, he, when you find out what changes need to be made. Amen. Amen. How many people cry out to have a best friend? Let me tell you who your best friend can be. The Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. He's not going to stab you in the back. He's not going to tell people, don't say anything. Have you ever heard that before? Don't say anything, but. Yes, amen. Amen. Bunch of hogwash. All these people that, my God, if I only had a best friend. If I had a best friend. If I had a wife. So you can get mad and then they tell the world all your secrets. That's right. That's right. Amen. Say, I think Bishop is telling the truth. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Let the Holy Ghost be your friend. Amen. Let the Holy Ghost be that friend that tells you this behavior is bad. You need to change it. Praise the Lord. Help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. And he's not going to be telling anybody else. Amen. He's like a good psychologist that keeps everything confidential. Amen. Amen. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me to understand the judgments of God. I know they're true and righteous. Shed light on me so that I won't fall under that judgment. Amen. Amen. I won't probably get out of it because when the Lord judges the nations, He judges everything. Amen. But you will not fall under that judgment. That's right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm going to ask my wife to join me. Praise the Lord. You can turn it off there, baby. Coming up.